that uh, Japanese goalkeeper, sure, very lucky that I wasn't goalless up to that point. That would have been some tragedy. Oh, well, they were still able to get through 2 1, and they are now in the uh, quarterfinals of the FIFA Women's World Cup. But we've made a change now. Uh, Sisi has um, left us. Uh, Tunde Koiki has joined us. Uh, good looking, uh, Tunde Koiki, and the spirit of the season. We're happy to have him Thank with you. us Thank on you very Sports much. Tonight. Thank I'm pleased to make Koiki very happy. He says, <laughs> I don't give compliments to the guys. Mm. Mm. But Tunde He's right, to... actually. You hardly give compliments to the guys. Okay. Mm. For obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, what do we have, guys? A lot, a lot to talk about, really, on the domestic scene, and I think. That's what we'll, we'll touch upon uh, as we go along. But today, thank you for joining us once again Always a pleasure. Uh, on Sports Tonight. Please keep your comments coming. A lot of comments are here. Uh, and uh, um, Ashimu. Okay, I, thought, I talked about Ashimu, and I talked about the guy who says he's ready to pay $1,000 to watch 3SE Enyiba over again. Uh, Atlade Adelekon, who is watching us from Dubai, says all we need is quality play from our national teams. Uh, go transition from defense to attack, and then the fans will come out. Which one is which one comes first? You play good football, the fans come, or the fans come and then they ginger you to play good football. I think that's an argument that we can have over and over again. But I think the fans should be there, even when the team is not playing too well. Come and show your love and your support, and maybe that will bring a change in the attitude of your team. All right, guys, let's. Uh, Take a look at some issues very quickly. And this first one here is of interest to us because it concerns one of our rising stars, uh, one of our tip top players on the domestic scene, Umfo Udo. This guy has his place already in history. Yeah. Highest goal scorer, record 23 goals last season for Iba. But for a long time, he's been ill. Uh, he came to Super Eagles camp, mm. uh, called up by Coach Keshi, but then he was released by the coaches uh, to go and get good treatment when he was not feeling fine. What's the story, Oye? Well, for you, um, the, I read Oyinba's um, reaction to the story. Mm. I somebody wrote a story that he yeah, was somebody wrote down a story with, with, with a, a, stroke. A, a sports um, a daily, you know, they've been quite uh, criticized, you know, but um, I think that paper is a reputable organization. Mm. They have responsible uh, reporters, journalists in that organization, mm. you know, mm. so, so we have to clarify that. And the man who wrote the story, uh, Sabo Suji, is a good friend of the chairman of Oyinba. So I don't think they, they have any... Or intentions against mm, the player mm, or the club, mm, mm. so that should be clarified. You know, because I've read, read a lot of comments on, on social media, people criticizing, you know, without even finding, you know, the root cause of um, the matter. But like you said, in putting it in proper perspective, Ufondo was sick. You know, um, he was supposed to play against the FC Final Bar in May. I think that was um, week um, six or seven. He couldn't uh, play because he was sick, and the club had to ask him to, you know, to not, not to honor that match. They, they did some, ran some tests. They, they, they have a hospital in um, Aba that did some tests and they discovered that he had a palsy that uh, a part of his face you know, could not uh, move and he had to be treated. He, he, he's been uh, sidelined since that time. Mm. And he said he came to the national team. And the doctors looked at him and told him. So mm. that is, that is the, that's the issue. And thankf thankfully, I saw some, uh, some uh, recent pictures of Mfondo yesterday. He, he's getting better. The most important thing is that he got... Eba announced that very soon they will be back in training. Yeah, he got... That, that's good news. He got that's urgent news, medical uh, attention and he's recuperating and he's going to play, you know, for the national team at Eba. So I think that should uh, settle everything. That mm. should not be a ceremony. Mm. You know, this is an organization that has reported the local league for over a decade. So, mm. so, 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 so this... Um, 20, uh, 20 this, years now. Yeah, mm. so, 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 so this human error should not um, make people start disparaging them. Mm. You mm. know, they have committed a lot you know, to the reportage of uh, the, uh, the local mm. league. So, 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 the, so the summary... Does any ulterior motive mm. at all? Mm. So the summary for us is that Umfa Udo will be back in training, according to Eniba, mm. yeah. will be back in training very, very Fingers soon. Crossed. Yeah, will be back in training very, very soon, and uh, will be back doing what he loves to do, which is to play football and score goals. And uh, I think the national team coach also, um, when Umfa showed up before the game against Chad, that any time this guy recovers, the doors of the national team... Are always the doors are always open mm. uh, for him to uh, get back uh, into the team. So that, that's uh, that's what we hope, and uh, we will we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. All right. So that's the good news coming from uh, Uyo, where Unfamiliar is. Let's quickly now just move from Uyo, just a few minutes 
We are in Portacot. So let's quickly cross over now to Portacot and uh, talk to our good friend, China Acheru. China Acheru um, is the media officer of uh, Dolphins of Portacot, but he's been giving us updates about what has been going on in uh, Portacot. China is a very happy man uh, on the program tonight. China, thank you for joining us on Sports Tonight. Um, really what's the good news? Um, the good news is that it's a bright day. Uh, we woke up this morning, we are breathing, we are alive. And um, we hope that we we'll wake up tomorrow morning. That's the good news. China, that's not what we are. That's not okay. what we are. I know what's not. Are you okay? We, you okay? We uh, all the, the players of dolphins, sharks, and rivers angels have been paid. Yeah, that's it. How yeah. many months? Um, for sharks players, six months. And, um, for dolphins, I think about six months. I don't know. I don't know the details, but um, the players are getting paid less months than the officials. And that's because um, sometime last year, I think before the FA Cup final, the Federation Cup final, the players were paid one month salary alone because they had to play the final. So I think the players are getting for six months and the officials are getting for seven months. Mm. So the good news yeah. is that Governor Yeson Wike has fulfilled his promise of clearing the backlog of salaries owed players of Dolphins and Sharks and Rivers Angels. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Mm. So what, what, what impact... Is this going to have on Dolphins and Sharks two Portacot teams in the bottom four of the Globe Premier League? Well, the truth is that um, first things first, they're happy that they've been paid eventually. Um, now, for those people they borrowed money from, they can go and pay their debt. Uh, after that, they're they, they, they just happy. You, you don't work for six, seven, eight months and you don't get paid. They're just happy. Now, they can stay focused on their football. They can play football and not be thinking about the landlord that has kicked out their wife and children from the house or the school fees they cannot pay at home. So the point is that they are happy, they are more relaxed, and they are going to be more focused, at least for now. Mm. But uh, after this, China, what's the future? That's the, that's the issue. Um, there have been different reports that maybe the government is considering selling off one of the clubs. What, what, what is the future now so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again? Well, the governor said something uh, on Saturday at the government house when he mentioned the sharks, dolphins, and rivers and just matter. And he said um, the former governor did not pay the salaries because he felt the club to be self-sustaining. But he has considered that it's too soon for that. And as long as the state government owns this club, they will pay salaries. He has not said anything yet about selling one or selling two, both of them. So I think for now, he will pay the salaries until that time when he's convinced that one of them should go. And if one should go, then it should be, it should be their decision to make. But for now, he's, con he, he's content running three clubs. Before I allow you to go, China, Oye Wuchumachuku, uh, your good friend, is here. I'm sure he's planning to come to Podakot over the weekend now, now that officials and players have been paid. And I know you are one of them. Well, Oye so, so Wachuku is welcome to Podako this weekend. But the truth is that we will be in Kano to play Kano Killers. So, welcome to Podako this weekend. And we hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> China, thank you so much for... We wish you the best of luck. And uh, maybe... Thank you very much. Now that these funds have come now, maybe you are going to Kano at the right time. Mm. Well, uh, we'll just see how it goes. Kano is a very difficult ground to play in. But we'll just, it's better to go to Kano um, with your salary paid than to go without your salary paid. Thank you, China, for speaking to us. We wish you guys the best of luck. And uh, once again, congratulations. And uh, guys, I think we should commend uh, uh, Governor Wiki. Uh, it may be too early, but mm -hmm. for this step, it deserves to be commended. Clearing this backlog, uh, understanding the dynamics of the fact that these clubs are owned for right. now mm -hmm. by the I River State Government and so paid. Uh, on the long term, it could be making the club self-sustaining, but for doing this, for the players, the coaches and the officials, I think it deserves to be commended. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think uh, any, anyone who makes such a gesture, when you have mm. players who have been played for half a year or even more, and, and you have set all these backwards in one fell swoop, that's, that's, uh, that, that's almost uh, godlike. It, it's humanitarian. You've saved lives, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and as for, to answer China, I think uh, they should forget about going to get any kind of point in Kano. I mean, I mean, uh, when you consider the kind of uh, mauling that Kano got uh, in, in Sunshine, Akure. in Akure, they are not in any mood to, mm. be, to be as generous as Governor Wiki. But uh, I think the long term for, for, for Port Harcourt, 
or, or for River State is to consider selling one of these clubs. It is difficult maintaining two Premier League clubs. Then also, there's also the issue about how you cannot have two clubs in the same competition. That has always been a contentious mm. issue yeah, but, for but, me. But, but they have always argued that Dolphins is a different arrangement, uh, although the funds is coming from the same pot. Anyway, let, let's leave that for now and uh, go quickly. So, yeah, let's run very quickly because our time is really running out. Mm. Let's go to um, Newby, Gabros. What's what the story? Oh, yeah, this is an interesting story from uh, Ifan Yoba United. I keep calling mm. them Gabros. Uh, Mitko Dobrev, the coach of Gabros. Mitko Dobrev, not the coach of Ifan Yoba. What does that mean? No, the, so, yeah, I think. Um, because uh, that's the story I'm, I'm maybe, getting maybe, everywhere. Maybe it's purely semantics. You know, I read the story that um, the contract he signed was with uh, Gabros. That's Mitko Dobrev, yes, the Bulgarian, the Bulgarian coach, uh, coach who handled the hand